Well, good morning to everyone. This is another good day. The Lord has blessed us to come together to worship and to praise his holy name. We're thankful for everyone out in Facebook land. We thank you, all of you across the uh, city of Hot Springs, members of the St. Mark Baptist Church, as well as people that's uh, out of town throughout the Southwest District, even across the uh, state of Arkansas, as well as uh, throughout this United States, there are places where we have an opportunity to uh, be blessed with people who uh, uh, tune in with us on Sunday mornings. Thank you. Thank you so very much. God is good, and uh, he is greatly to be praised. We hope and pray that something is said and done today that will uh, be a blessing uh, to you and uh, that you will be able to just lift up and praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow. Amen. Thank you so very much. I want you to be praying with us. Uh, we are uh, in the process of praying and trying to figure out uh, some of the uh, strategies that we need to take to uh, get back open up. And, and I am certainly looking forward to that. Uh, and bless the Lord. Lord willing, we will continue to be doing live streaming. And uh, we look forward to you who are out of town and out of state to that's not in your church building, that you get a chance to still tune in with us. And uh, we'll just look forward to uh, seeing some thumbs up and some God bless you, some hallelujahs and some hands of praise, all of those things. So God bless you and keep you is our prayer. Uh, pray for us. We want to uh, share a word today, which I believe that God has given to us. And we look forward to what uh, God is going uh, to do on our behalf today. I want to start off today uh, by reading a passage of scripture uh, to you, and which comes from the Psalms. It actually comes from the first number of Psalms. And uh, from the first number of Psalms, we will begin reading at the first verse. Bless is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law do he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, and his leaf also shall not wither. Amen. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. I want to ask that we would uh, bow in a time of prayer. I want to uh, be praying for uh, Reverend Hampton this morning. Uh, he's uh, down in Gurdon, Arkansas. We'll be ministering down there this morning. We certainly want to uh, be praying for him. Thank God for uh, Pastor uh, Douglas A. Jones and his wife. Uh, they're He's one of ours, and they are uh, been blessed to have a drive-by baby shower yesterday. So we're just blessed of God to see them. We're praying for uh, the great success and uh, the uh, coming of the little one. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we are so grateful. We are appreciative for the many, many things that you have done for us. We're thankful for how you brought us through so many seen and unseen dangers. And we come to realize, God, that uh, it's because of your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your kindness, that you have allowed us to see this another day. We thank you from whom all blessings flow. We pray, God, that you will forgive us of all of our shortcomings, that you would cleanse us of all of our sins and iniquities, that you would wash us thoroughly, that we may be made white as snow. God, that you would create into us a clean heart and renew within us the right spirit. 
that we might teach transgressors to be converted unto you. We need you right now. This whole world needs you. This United States of America needs you. This whole universe needs your power, your strength. We need you to give us, oh God, the directions that we need to go. We pray, God, you will just wash us, cleanse us, oh God. We realize that all of us have sinned. We've come short of your glory, God, but we come to lay ourselves bare and ask you to forgive us and cleanse us. Use us, God, in your service. Draw us nearer each and every day. Use us, God, that we may be a vessel that will teach others about the goodness of the Lord. We pray, God, for those names that have been called. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus for Pastor Hampton, or Reverend Hampton this morning, as he would go and proclaim a word down in Girton, Arkansas. We pray, God, that you would just uh, bless the people that he's going uh, to proclaim a word to. We pray, God, for Pastor Jones, continue to hold him and keep him in your care. We thank you for the St. Mark Church family as a whole. We thank you, God, for those who listen to us, not only of the St. Mark Church family, but all across God, even Hot Springs and across Arkansas and so many other places, we give you thanks. We give you glory right now. We ask you, God, to bless all of our elderly, Lord, those that are going through. You know who they are. God, we just thank you right now for your kindness, God. You are good, God, and you are greatly to be praised. We pray in the name of Jesus, God. You will just teach us how to walk and live, God, the way you want us to walk and to live and to not uh, be foolish in the things, God, of the things that you have called us to do. Let us walk, oh God, circumspectively and not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the times, knowing that the days are evil. Have thine own way, God. You are the potter and we are the clay. Mold and shape us right now after thine own will. We give you glory, God. We pray for each minister all across the city of Hot Springs. We pray, God, for all of our sister churches. God, we pray for the body of Christ as a whole. Have your way, God. Breathe afresh upon every one of us today. We need you right now. We love you, God. We love you. And God, we're not ashamed of it. And we're not going to take it back because we love you. We appreciate what you've done for us and what you're doing. We just love you so much, God, and don't even have the words to adequately express our gratitude. But if you'll just accept our coming to say thank you, we'll give your name the praise. We'll give your name the glory. Oh, God bless you right now. Bless you in the name. Bless you, God. Oh, God, keep us in Jesus' name. Thank you, sir. Amen, amen. Thank you so much. My wife is going to come and share with us today in uh, the Ministry of Music. And uh, be reminded, we don't own any of the songs and all that, but uh, we just love to praise the Lord. And we will give him praise because uh, he is the one that deserves it and is worthy of it. Amen. God is worthy of all of our praise. And whatever Jesus said that he would do, he will do it because he's a promise keeper. Amen.
ma ma Amen, amen. He'll fight your battle. Jesus will. Won't he do it? Amen, amen. He'll fight your battle. Yes, he will. Praise God Almighty. Yes, yes. Again, I want to go to the 15th chapter of the gospel as recorded by St. Luke. The 15th chapter of the gospel as recorded by St. Luke. Uh, we've been in this chapter the last two, three weeks. And again, we want to uh, uh, labor in that particular again. Amen. We've been talking about uh, three lost, two found, and one return. Amen. We've talked about uh, the, lost, the lost sheep that uh, wandered off. And we talked about the lost coin that got misplaced in the house, but yet out of circulation. Today we want to uh, talk about another phase of the parable. Uh, it's really, as I've told us up front, it's really not three parables. It's uh, actually three stories that deals with one parable. And when we think about uh, the goodness and the greatness of God. It's actually about God and his love for his people. Amen. He loves us. And each story here illustrates and helps us to understand about the goodness of almighty God. I want to read to us today starting at a verse 11. Verse 11. I will not try to conclude this uh, phase of it today, but uh, of, of this lesson, but we will uh, take a portion of it. I want you to pray for us. Verse 11, and he said, a certain man had two sons. Amen. Had two sons. Amen. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there rose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Verse 15, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into the field to feed the swine. I want to go back to verse 11 and uh, verse 12 he says and the younger of them said to his father father give me the portion of goods that fall falleth to me. Amen. So many times we ask for things that we really know not what we ask for. And uh, the question today is if you get it what will you do with it? And the second phase of it are you sure this is what you want. Amen. Those, those are questions we have to face in life. If we get what we're asking for, what are we going to do with it? And are we really sure what we are asking for? Is that really what we want? We've been talking about 
the lost sheep. If you remember the lost sheep, uh, we believe just wandered off, wandered away from the fold. And because of the shepherds, uh, love and concern and his ability to count and notice when one sheep was in trouble or one sheep was gone, when one sheep was out of the fold, we find that even though the sheep wandered off, not really knowing where that sheep was going, that sheep didn't really know where he was going. That, that's, that's the problem of life. Sometimes we get, we get to wandering off and headed in directions that we know not of. But it takes a wise shepherd to go out and look for his sheep, listen for the voice of his sheep, know how, knows how to track the sheep, look at the footprints, look at uh, places where there may be blood on leaves or blood up against something and he recognizes that this is a great possibility where my sheep have gone through and listens tentatively and listens to hear the sound of the sheep. And after a while, he, he, he finds the sheep and uh, go and get the sheep. He bounds the sheep up, put him on his neck, bring him back to the fold. You know, uh, there's an old saying, a doctor cannot reset bones while you're at home. Either you have to be brought to him or he has to be brought to you. And so in this case, the shepherd goes to where the sheep is. And uh, oftentimes they tell us during those days uh, because of the love that the shepherd has for the sheep and that sheep may be in one that's a little hard-headed and uh, wandered off before maybe and uh, has the potential of uh, running off again. So what the shepherd does is actually break the leg of the sheep, not because he was so disturbed with the sheep or frustrated with the sheep, but he knew the danger the sheep was getting himself into. But he didn't just break the leg. He takes the sheep and pick him up and put him on his own neck and carry him back to safety. And then there was a woman, the coin in the house did not get up and move, the coin did not leave. We do not know how the coin got misplaced, but somehow the coin got misplaced. Maybe it rolled out of a sack, maybe it got knocked off of the table. Maybe it got knocked off the shelf. What We do not know. But we do know when the woman goes to look for the coin, it is not there. I, uh, one, one of my, uh, one of my, one of my uh, daughters, one of my daughters was uh, telling me last week, uh, she was listening to, uh, to 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 me on on the uh, uh, YouTube. I mean, not YouTube, but on the uh, Facebook. And and uh, she had the nerves enough to say, while 
and I, I'm not calling any name. I'm, I'm just saying, my, one of my daughters, she was on her way to church, one of my daughters, uh, to, to where her husband passed. Uh, I, uh, my daughter had the nerves enough to say, I jinxed her by preaching that message. She, she, was, she was in a hurry, and she was uh, listening to me and discovered her keys was lost. Her, her, her key. Now, how, how, how did I jinx her? I'm, I'm, well, I won't say I'm in hot spring because that would indicate she's uh, somewhere else, uh, you know, between here and Little Rock. I, but, but I'm just saying, how, how, how would I jinx her and her keys is in her house? Don't forget that. In the house. Not just a house. In her house. Things can get lost. In the house. People can get lost. In the house. And, and, so, and so she calls one of the sisters. And I won't call her name. And tell her. Say, I'm, I'm, I'm running late. And you may have to go ahead and get started because uh, I have lost my keys. I've lost my keys. And, and uh, the, the young lady told us, says, well, uh, sister so-and-so, or first lady, I'm, oh, but anyway, says, said, did you check in the trash can? I, I, had, I, hadn't, I hadn't been to the trash can. I hadn't been by the trash can, so... It's not in the trash can. And so she keeps looking. She's looking. She, she, she gets her flashlight. She looks. She look, get a broom. All this. And she looks. And all of a sudden it dawns on her. Maybe I ought to look in the trash can. <laughs> it's amazing how things can get lost in places we wouldn't even think of. Guess where the keys was that I got blamed for? In the trash can. Yeah, yeah you know, you know, you. Uh, I mean, but 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 the sheep was lost. The the <laughs> I don't know what they got to do with keys, but the coin was lost. And in the text today, we have a young son. Who is lost? I do not want to hold you long, but I do want to want you to look at the text. The, the text tells us, uh, st telling us, starting at the 11th verse, he says, there, there was a man who had two sons. That, that was a certain man in the text had two sons. Sons, two, two sons. I, 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 I like that because it points out that he not only had one son, but he had another son, which was two sons. The younger came to his father, the, 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 the younger son, the younger son. And, and I, I like the way uh, it's written here. He says, he says to him, notice what he says, father, daddy, papa, pops, whatever. I, I don't know what, you know, father. Notice what he says, give me. Sometimes, sometimes it's just all about me, isn't it? Give me. Look, look, Dad, I need you to give me the portion of good that falleth to me. I, I know the tradition. I know, I know that, that, that once you are dead, automatically there's a certain portion coming to me. But, but I've, I've worked on reading 
about all of the way uh, of the way things go. And so I know that I don't really have to wait till you dead. I can do it now. So, Daddy, I, I feel like I'm a big boy now. I, I feel like I can make it on my own. I, I, as a matter of fact, I'm not sure I want to put up with the rules the rest of the time that I'm around here. I'm ready to go. I want to kick it. I want to go and hang out with others who are having fun. I want to live it up. I don't want to hang around here every time you said go clean the grounds, go do this and go do that. I want to have some fun. And notice what he says. Give me Notice that. Give me the portion that falleth to me. Now notice what, notice, notice the next verse, uh, the next sentence. It says, and he, who is the daddy, he divided unto them. Watch this. He had two sons. One son was asking. The other son was not asking. But the father decided to give. So he not only gave to one son, he gave to both sons. And notice what he gave. He gave to them his. Lord, help me today. Here is a son who comes and say, Daddy, Father, I want the portion that befall it, that fall it to me. I want it now. I'm ready to go. And the Father decides, all right, all right. Now look at me as, as much as you can in this uh, Facebook or whatever. I need you to look at me and understand. The Father was not stupid. He knew, son, that's a bad choice. That, that's not a good idea. What you got coming, whether I give it to you now, give it to you later, I, you, you're going to get it. But to leave right now would be a tragedy. You, you, you're working now out of immaturity. See, Daddy, that's what, that, that's what you think. You think I don't know nothing. You think I, you think I don't have no sense. You think I can't, can't make it. All you got to do is give me what belongs to me, and I'll show you I can make it. The Bible doesn't say that. That's what I, you know, you know. Sometimes we we get hot headed. We get to a point where we think uh, we we got. And the daddy knows he's making a bad mistake. And in situations like that, in those days and time, uh, you leave like that. Uh, the the younger son would get a third, and the the, the older son would get two thirds, and all of this. And he wants to go, and he wants to. Uh, leave home and his daddy, even though his daddy knows that he's making a bad mistake and making a bad choice, there are some times in life the only way we can learn is by heart knocks. Fathers don't want to see our children we don't want to see our children having to struggle unnecessarily we don't want to have to see our sons going out and getting in trouble and and, and having hardship brought upon them but son I can detect in your voice, your mind is made up. You are ready to go. I don't want you to try to steal from me. I don't want you to try to maneuver and try to get it. You want to go? Question. Are you ready? Are you sure this is what you want? Are you sure this is the decision you want to make 
right, Daddy, you're holding my game up. I got to go. Give me my money. Let me go. And the father does not argue with him, does not debate with him, does not fuss with him. He divides up his living and gives it to them. Young man got his clothes, didn't have a car. No, he didn't have a Mustang. You know, he, he didn't have a Dodge Charger. You know, he, he, he didn't have none of that. Apparently, he left It was I probably would have left earlier but all of a sudden something happens there's no rain So fast until he runs out. Didn't have nobody to tell him about saving annuities. Didn't have anybody to tell him about 401ks. Nobody to tell him any of this stuff. He wants to learn it on his own. Now he has run out. And if there may be a young man out there listening to me right now, just remember when you leave home, when you go away from home, not everybody going to treat you like mom and daddy. I know we live in a time that mom and daddies don't even treat folk right, but everybody's not going to treat you like Mama and daddy, you will go out into a far country and you will look to those whom you set up the table for. You tried to help and all of a sudden now you need help and guess what? So many of those that you tried to help out, they are in the same condition that you're in. And they are not as fruitful. They they, they, they are no more selfish than you are. Even though they had eaten on you and drank on you, they are selfish. And you can't get anything from them. So he looks for a job. He goes to a man in the town where he is. Looking for, if you go, if you go to old Bob down the street, but Bob, Bob's still doing pretty good. He, he has a few people that, that, that he'll let work. And he ain't going to pay you much. But he's going to pay you what he can. And at least it'll get you some food for the night and some, you know, things here and there. He goes. And the man sends him to the hog pit. How degrading. It's almost as if he would look the man in the eye and say, do you not know who I am? Do you not know where I have come from? We do not serve swines. We don't feed 
Hogs, we don't feed pigs. That's a disgrace. That's a dishonor to my culture. We don't do that. Son, do you want the job or not? You know, the question is, were you sure you wanted to go? Because back at home, uh, they, they doing pretty good, but uh, out here, ain't nobody doing good. And, 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 and I will give you a little job if you want to feed the swines, but now if you don't want it, you can go on about your business. Hungry. Hungry. I don't know if anybody listening to me ever really been hungry. You, you, you know, we, we get to a point in life, there are some things we don't eat because we don't like. We, 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 we get choicy. But then again, there are things we understand if you're hungry. You, you won't be sitting around, Mama, I don't, I don't want no spinach. I don't eat no spinach. I don't like that. I, 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 don't, I don't like them uh, uh, mashed potatoes. I don't like that. I, I, I want me some, uh, I, I just want some Cheerios. I, no, no, if, if you're in a famine, you will go for what you can get. He's in a hog's pen. The question, my friends, is this, and I'm coming to a close. You asked for this. Your daddy didn't invite you to leave. He didn't, he didn't threaten you and tell you if you don't do this and don't do that, you were going to have to leave. He didn't do any of that. You came to him and asked him to give the portion that belonged to you. You did that. Now the question is, do you even know what you asked for? Do, did you even know the consequences? And I tell you, son, life is filled with questions. Life is filled with decisions, but no decision is ever made without some type of consequences. Do you know what you're asking for? And there he is. He's out there. He's away from home. Away from father, away from his brother. He received the goods that falleth to him. Saints of God, today God is saying, Come ye that love the Lord and let your joy be known. Trust in me and never doubt because it is the God of heaven, the God of glory who will bring you out. Trust God. Don't be in so big a hurry to get away from God. He's in a hog's pen. Stinky in a hog's pen. Down where there is slop in the hog's pen. Where it is muddy and nasty and filthy. They call him the prodigal son. You know what prodigal means? Prodigal means wasteful. You have wasted away what you had. And now you're in a hog's pen. What are you going to do with what you have received? On this case. Nothing, because it's all gone. What do you do when you don't know what to do? Where do you go when you don't know where to go? Who do you run to when there seems to be nobody to run to? What do you do? And as I close, he sit down. And he began to reflect back over in his mind. Maybe he thought about the lost coin or the lost sheep. Maybe he thought of some experience back during his home time. 
And I tell you, as I said on last week, a lost coin is worthless as long as it's lost. It doesn't mean it doesn't have any value. It means it's worthless because it's out of circulation. But when it's put in the hands of the right person, and this boy no doubt is thinking to himself, hey, hold on here. What I need to do is back up and turn around. Make a good about face and go back to where I have come from because there is a father back home who loves me. He loves me and he has me enough to spare and here I am sitting in a hog's pen and I'm starving. I'm starving. Somebody right now, you in the hog, pens of, hog pen of life. You are in the hog pen of life right now. And I tell you, God is still standing with outstretched arms. And he's saying, whosoever will, let him come. Though your sins be a scarlet, red like crimson, come unto me. And I'll make them white as snow. He loves us. And the writer said, oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. How did I know he loved you? He went to a hill called Calvary. He died. On a Roman cross, he shedded his blood from his head, his side, his hands, his feet. He shedded his blood, and the songwriter says that blood reaches to the highest mountain, flows to the lowest valley. It shall never, I said never, never, never lose its power. God loves us. You may have wandered far away from him, but you could come back home today. You may have walked away. May, maybe maybe you, you can sense in your spirit, I messed up. But God is saying, okay, okay, come on. Come on. Somebody may be saying, well, he died. He died. Oh, yes, he did. He died. How long? How am I going to trust in a man who couldn't even keep his own life? He died. That's not the end of the story. He died for you. He died for me. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. He came to give his life a ransom that you and I might have the right to the tree of life. Yes, he died, but not only did he die, he was buried. Didn't even have a tomb of his own. He was put in a borrowed tomb. But why do you need a tomb when you have no intentions of staying bright early Sunday morning? Got up from the grave. All power in his hand. Thank God for Jesus. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. Today is a good day to receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your life. To know that he is God and that he has made us and not we ourselves. If you've been listening to me today and you've wandered far away from God. And you've asked for your early inheritance. And say, God, I want to get out of here. I want to do my own thing. And you may sense that God, even at some point in time, let you have it. And you've got to ask yourself, what am I going to do with it? What am I going to do with it? i tell you what you do. Take whatever you got left 
and carry it back to him. Well, I don't have the money. It's gone. Take what you got left. I don't have the money. Take what you have left. It wasn't money that he was concerned about. If it was just money, he didn't have to give you what he gave you. The loss the daddy had was you. And every once in a while, we need to just come back and say, I'm yours, Lord. Everything I got. Everything I am, if you don't mind, just try me and see if I can be completely yours. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come in your presence. I've shared this word, God, as humbly as I know how. I hope, God, that someone has heard me speak today, not trying to impress anybody with highfalutin words, not trying to impress anyone as if I'm some great preacher, but God, I just want people to know you love us. You did it for me. And if you did it for me, God, you can do it for those who are listening to me right now. I beg of you, God, touch some heart, touch some mind. Come into the life of day. Somebody may be looking for a new start, a change of life. You can hit us up on Facebook. You can let us know. You can send us something in the chat. You can let us know that you want the pastor or someone to reach out to you from the church, we'll certainly do that. And we will try to help you to make the right decision. This may not be the church uh, that you want to join. We would love for you to join the St. Mark Baptist Church. But if this is not the church you want to join, we'll help you to get to a place as long as it's a Bible-believing church. The Spirit of the Lord says, come. The bride says, come. Whosoever will. Let him come. Though your sins be as scarlet or red like crimson, come unto me. I'll make them white as snow. The doors of the church is open. I let a Christian experience candidate for baptism. This is a good day. Pastor, I've never done it like that before. I've always been in the church building. And I've seen people walk down the aisle. So you're telling me I can just say yes on the Facebook, you can say, yes, I want you, Lord. I want to worship you. I want to praise you. This is a good day to do it. In the name of God, in the mighty name of God, he's good. He's worthy. He's greatly to be praised. Oh, bless his holy name. Hallelujah. 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 As we pray, prepare for our communion today, we ask you, in my church, you should have your uh, communion, and uh, we want to partake uh, together. Uh, we believe, and the Lord has told us, as often as you do it, to show forth my suffering in my death till I come. And so we just want to trust God and believe him and know that he is God. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. As we come today, the scripture teaches us that uh, Jesus told his disciples to go up and prepare and make ready uh, you see the good man tell the good man of the house that the master has need of that upper room and you go there and you prepare and you make ready and uh, we know they uh, uh, remember the Passover the Passover had to do when the blood was sprinkled on the doorposts and uh, 
by sprinkling it on the doorposts, they were being obedient. And uh, the Spirit of the Lord, when he came through, he knew uh, that that was a house where the people of God was. And so the deaf angel passed over. And they were to commemorate that and to remember on out through ages to come. And we still do that because we believe the Lord is dead. And so he told his disciples, he said, as often as you do this, you do it to show forth my suffering, my death, till I come. He said, take the bread and divide it among yourselves. He said, this is my body, which is broken for you. This, he said, do in remembrance of me. And they did eat. took the cup in like manner and said this is my blood in the New Testament as often as you drink of it you do show forth my suffering my death till I come without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin and he said drink ye all of it drink it because we partake of that which symbolizes the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and they did drink. Amen, amen. We certainly want to thank you for being present with us. We want to close uh, out uh, today, <clears throat> this morning. We want to remember uh, Dennis, Frankie White. Uh, we want to... Uh, Remember Sister Patricia White and uh, Wesley, and uh, there are so many who are going through. And uh, but we know God, God, God will. Sister Cross, they told us that He will, and He'll work out whatever uh, we are dealing with and whatever we way we find ourselves. So let us continue to pray, Sister Ashley, uh, Mother. Uh, Jackson, Reverend uh, Greg Ashley, Mama Katie, and there are just so many. I uh, want to continue to pray for uh, Jackie, Sister Wonder, and the uh, entire family. There are so many who are uh, struggling, going through a rough time. And if we ever needed the Lord before, we sure do need him now. And I just ask you to let's just continue to pray one for the other. Pray for uh, Reverend Hampton. I'm not exactly sure what time he's supposed to be in Gurdon, but I uh, want to pray uh, for him there, safe travel there uh, and back. Amen. Thank you. Thank everyone for uh, going over to Brother Jones. I believe it was, was that last Monday, uh, showing love to him for 98 years, 98 years old. Thank you. Thank you for uh, being a part of that. We bless God for him. He's a great body, person to the body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. We pray. Thank you, Brother Joe, Tim, and all of you who uh, work with us. Thank uh Sister Latoya uh, Graves, thank her for all of the hard work she does. And uh, just thank God for everyone. May God bless us all. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we do come this morning again. We thank you. We pray, God, that uh, something has been said, something has been done. In some way, we've encouraged someone today. We remember Dr. Martin Luther King says, if I can help someone as I travel along this way, then my living will not be in vain. I pray for all of those names that have been called. Mother Annie Mae Jackson, Mother Carrie Ashley, Reverend Greg Ashley, 
God, touch the day. Touch the day. Thank you for what you've done for Frankie White. Went through a little rough time there. But God, we're so thankful that you allowed him to go through his surgery. As far as we know, he's making a comeback. Brother Dennis, thank you for him. God, we thank you. We pray for Sister Glodine White. She, we know she's one of those individuals who believe in doing all she can do for family. I pray, God, you give her strength and let her not be weary in well-doing. I pray continuously, God. Mama Katie, Daisy, James Johnson. God, there are so many. I just, just really hate even calling names because I know you know and inevitably I forget someone. And I don't want anybody to feel that they are unimportant because, God, they are important. Sometimes I just don't recall all at the time that needs to be recalled. I thank you for my wife, my children. God, I pray continuously for Demetria. She's been dealing with her arm, her shoulder. May you continue to bless and build her up. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for what you did for the McCollum family and allowed them to go to Atlanta and come back safely without any hurt, harm, or danger. We pray for Karen, God, and the loss of her son. We just pray that you will please uh, strengthen her in her mind, in her spirit, in her body. We thank you for Jackie, God. We just pray in the name of Jesus that you will so reveal yourself. We know, God, that in any loss of loved ones, those whom we have cared for, God, we know that uh, there are some rough days ahead. But in the midst of it all, we know you are still God. You promised never to leave us. You've always been with us. And you're the same today, yesterday, and forever. God, there are so many, so many. Would you please uh, look and have mercy? I pray for my cousin, Nathaniel, in Memphis, who had to go back to the hospital just uh, on Friday, I believe. I pray, God, build him up, God. He's gone through a lot this year. In fact, he's gone through a lot over the past year, touching my mother-in-law. God, please uh, look and have mercy. Bless all that we're to pray for. Thank you. Thank you for each person here this morning who strives with us, stays with us. Thank you. We love you, God. We bless you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. To you that is able to keep us from falling, to present us spotless before the Father in heaven. Your love, your majesty, sweet communion of your Holy Spirit. Rest, rule, and abide with us now and forevermore. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.